بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Through macroeconomic series, we will cover main topics in macroeconomics. Today, we will give a roadmap for macroeconomics. We will start with the objectives of macroeconomics. For any step we take in our life, we should have an objective or a group of objectives. Our objectives in macroeconomics as a policy makers or as a researchers, academicians, uh, include three different objectives. So we'll start with macroeconomic objectives. Objectives. In fact, there are three objectives for macroeconomic as a policy or as a uh, academicians. Policy makers in the country think of achieving these three objectives. These three objectives are, okay, the first objective is output and national income growth. Output means the production volume in the country over a certain period of time, could be a year, a month, a quarter of the year. And national income, there are different aspects or different types of national income such as GDP, GNP, and we will discuss these types later on, inshallah. So, this is the first objective that policymakers should take into consideration when they plan, when they decide upon the uh, macroeconomic policy in the country. The second objective in macroeconomics is unemployment reduction. Unemployment reduction. Note that we say here that unemployment reduction, not unemployment elimination, because it is impossible to eliminate unemployment as long as we are human being and we are always incomplete, and therefore there will still be some resources unutilized in any nation. The third objective in macroeconomics is price and economic stability. Price and economic stability. By price we mean all prices. These prices could be the price of final goods and services in the economy such as the price of um, cars, the price of mobiles, prices of shares in capital market, prices of labor, which is wage rate, price of capital, which is the interest rate, price of entrepreneurship, which is the profit. So by prices we mean, or even the price of currency is considered as the price, which we call it the exchange rate. So these are the main three objectives of macroeconomics. if we have them all in one like this. So these are the objectives of macroeconomics as a policy or as a theory. So policy makers in the country, cabinet minister, planners, should think how to achieve these three objectives. To achieve these objectives, policy makers in the country have two different policies. The first policy is called fiscal policy. And the second policy is monetary policy. So we have two poli policies that should be planned and carried out by policymakers in the country. One of them is called fiscal policy, the second is monetary policy. Fiscal policy here is supervised or orchestrated by the, what we call, Ministry of Finance. Ministry of Finance supervise, orchestrate, or uh, plan for the, fiscal, for the fiscal policy. But this does not mean that the fiscal policy is carried out totally by the Ministry of Finance. All government ent entities has their own jobs to f 
for, uh, to carry out this uh, policy. On the other hand, we have monetary policy. Likewise, monetary policy, we have a builder to build this policy and supervise it. The builder or the supervisor for monetary policy is the central banks. So if we consider Saudi Arabia, for example, the Saudi Arabian Monetary Agency is the monetary authority that is responsible to carry out, to plan, and supervise the monetary policy in the country. In other countries, this central bank is called, for example, in the United States, Central bank is called U.S. Federal Reserve. In Jordan, it's called Central Bank of Jordan. In Egypt, it's called Central Bank of Egypt. So these are the two builders of the fiscal policy. But like any other builders of any building, builders need instruments. They need tools. So in, in, uh, for, military, for um, uh, Ministry of Finance to carry out the fiscal policy, they have their own tools or instruments. We call these instruments fiscal instruments. So fiscal instruments are those instruments or fiscal tools that is used by Ministry of Finance to carry out fiscal policy to achieve one or more than one of these three obje objectives. Likewise, for central banks or monetary authority, they have their own instruments and we call them monetary instruments. So, for fiscal policy, these instruments include, for example, public revenues. Public revenues, which includes, for example, taxes, fees, and so on different instruments for physical policy. Public revenue is the first instrument within the hand of physical uh, policy to carry out uh, the physical policy and therefore to achieve the macroeconomic objectives. The second instruments in the hand of the Ministry of Finance to carry out the physical policy is public expenditures. Public Expenditures, public expenditures like spending on infrastructure, like subsidies, government subsidy, spending on infrastructure, and so on. Different, all government spendings is called public expenditures and also for fiscal policy to be carried out in an effective way there should be certain fiscal regulations or bylaws we will add it here to have fiscal regulations likewise for monetary policy we have certain instruments these instruments include the first one is the interest rate. The first tool in the hand of the monetary policy or the monetary authority is the interest rate. The second instrument used by monetary authority is what we call cash reserve ratio. Cash reserve ratio or CRR. Of course, interest rate is called in macroeconomics I, and CRR, the third monetary instrument here is what we call open market operations. Open market operations, or OMO. Last instruments or certain instruments used by monetary authority is monetary regulations.
So as we see here, we have fiscal instruments and monetary instruments. These instruments are used separately or combined together to achieve one or more than one of these objectives. As an example, how to use these instruments to achieve macroeconomic objectives, but of course later on, we will explain in details how these instruments will be used to achieve one or more. But as an example for today's class or today's um, video, we will uh, look at any one of these inter uh, ex examples. Let's take, for example, the, we have a problem uh, of recession in the economy. Recession means very low aggregate demand in the economy. Growth rate is uh, negative growth rates over uh, two successive quarters of the year. So we need to solve this problem of recession. To solve such a problem of recession, we can tackle or handle one or ma more than one of these tools, but we, ma we must make sure that such used tools are effective and efficient. For example, we can look at uh, taxes. We have recession in the economy. So we need to stimulate the economy to grow at a higher rate. The very clear or the engine for the growth rate is the increase in aggregate demand in the economy. How to spur the economic growth to grow at a higher rate? So we can look at tax. We can reduce tax. Once we reduce tax, consumers, households, will be able to buy more goods and services. Likewise, producers, importers, exporters have more money now because government is not imposing more tax. Instead, they are lowering the tax and the people have more money. Having more money means higher ability to buy or higher ability to invest. So investor will invest more, producers will produce more, exporters will export more, consumers will consume more, and therefore aggregate demand in the economy will increase. When aggregate demand increase, we will answer the first question of economics, which is, which is to whom we should produce. To whom we should produce now increased. We have to produce more because aggregate demand has increased in the economy, and therefore we have to produce more. So in this way, investors are encouraged to produce more goods and services. So once they produce more goods and services, they need people to work, and therefore they will employ more people, which will help in reducing the unemployment rate also. So we can achieve two objectives in one policy. This is what's happening nowadays in the United States. In the United States now, they are cutting the tax on certain investments, certain sectors in the economy. This is the fiscal policy used in order to spur the economic growth. And it has produced certain fruits, certain fruit outcomes for the uh, United States economy. For example, now the unemployment has decreased to almost 4.1%. The growth rate is almost 3%, 2.9%, So. And in the same time, combination of policies can be used together. This is what we can um, uh, cover for today's class as a roadmap for our future discussions or what we call macroeconomic series. Thank you for listening.